Today we are headed straight to the pantry to grab a familiar staple, but there's nothing basic about it. Here to her turn things up a notch and show us how to transform canned tuna into a gourmet meal is Chef Paul Lilikas. <laughs> tuna, tuna, tuna. Tuna. Chef, I love tuna, but talk to us about tuna. Yeah, I think the tuna is one of those mis perceived things, you know? Yeah. Some people think it's just for casserole or it's just for tuna sandwiches, but like in Europe, tinned fish is quite sexy, you know? It's a, it's a really beautiful ingredient and if used correctly, it can be a wonderful dinner or lunch staple. Oh my gosh, you can get the most high-end sardines, mackerel, tuna, all in a can and it's not a big deal. For some reason, we have this fixation here and thinking that tuna is like cat food. It is not. No. It is very good for you. It just yeah. depends on how you uh, prepare it. Yeah, how right? you transform it. Yes. So first off, let's go through different types of tuna because some yeah. people I think can be a little confused at the grocery store. So if we break it down, there's tuna packed in oil and there's tuna packed in water. Yeah. Tuna packed in water comes in two types. So there's white tuna that's always albacore that's okay. a large tuna it's just albacore the white it's a milder flavor got it and then there's light tuna and okay. that is a variety it comes from a variety of different smaller tuna species like yellowfin skipjack and within those all water packed you'll find solid or chunk or flaked and that just has to do with the size of the tuna when it comes the pieces in the can the pieces okay so yeah. if you're getting the chunk there's going to be <laughs> chunks exactly um and if flakes is going to be flaky it's what's just the a other little one finer or you can get solid, solid which is you know which is just a large piece so if you wanted larger pieces for fish tacos for example maybe right. solid is right for you but if you're making tuna salad or a tuna casserole yeah. or blending it into a sauce you could use flaked okay and there's not and 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 the price points can be a little bit different you know but like just you know, buy what you can afford and yeah. treat it well, and it will be a beautiful thing. That's really what it comes down to. Do we care about oil or water packed? I like, okay, so it all depends on how you're using it. Yeah. I like oil packed because it comes in its own olive oil. Mm -hmm. So here, for example, you can see how much oil comes in that can, and it's got this really rich luxuriousness to it. And, you know, this is a good segue because it's all about how you use it. So yes. we're gonna use that olive oil because it has big flavor. That's quite a bit of olive oil that yeah. you're just getting from the can of tuna. Yep. So recipe number one, what are okay. we gonna make? So recipe number one, we're going to make a spicy sesame tuna bowl. Oh my gosh. And I just wanna like show you what we mean by a tuna bowl. I'm sorry, Al, I know you were over there, but look <laughs> at this. It's so good. So this is, I mean, I love a good bowl. I could have a bowl of everything, but that's got every single thing you need in a meal and it's healthy yeah. and it's not going to break the bank. So exactly. we love that. And and it, it, that's really what it comes down to. I don't want to use a ton of ingredients, so let's make the dressing. Okay. Here, I've got the oil from the can, okay. so you don't even have to add your own oil. You want to add a little bit of white vinegar. That's going to add some tang, some acidity. Chef, do you want it all in there? Yeah, go for it. Okay. And then some toasted sesame oil. Nice. And here's the secret ingredient. Do you know what this is? Um, I've seen it before, but tell them what it's called. This is called chili crisp. So this is, so it's good. a staple in, it's a its a wonderful Chinese stuff? condiment. Yeah. It's crunchy, it's got umami, it's mm. spicy. So if you don't have that, you could always just use sriracha, but I'm gonna add a good, let's say, two spoonfuls yeah, of man, that. Yeah, go for it. It's a flavor builder, and yes. I think that's what often I'm doing wrong with my recipes. That's why they're bland if and basic. bland and basic, yeah, that's, you're missing that's something. That's what you need exactly. in there. You need a flavor builder. It yeah. doesn't matter what you put in there, it's gonna taste delicious. Of course, and now it's really just about layering it into the bowl, so. Now we're packing the bowl. I'm adding some cooked brown rice, and by the way, there's a really good tip for cooking brown rice in the microwave in this recipe. Okay. It's so easy and consistent. If you don't have a rice cooker, I'm gonna add yeah. some baby spinach here. You want to help me? You want oh, yeah. Here, you could throw in That's some... That's me just hanging out watching him do all the work. <laughs> throw I'll in do some, some red cabbage. cabbage. Yeah, I like that for crunch. And me too. it adds good nutrients as and well. And color. And color. Is that enough? I, I'd throw in a touch more. You got it. And then I'm going to go in with all of this avocado. I oh, like... Oh, yeah. That's the good fat right there. Yeah, and how about some radish you for crunch? It. And this goes really nicely with that sesame, spicy flavors. And... 
The color is really beautiful. It's so nice. So Eat the rainbow. Exactly. And you could pack this away for a lunch. This could be a dinner. I want to get lots of that dressing onto that rice. And now... Oh, we didn't even put the tuna in yet. Well, here comes the tuna. So Oh, that's smart. Yeah, so I'm just going to gently fold it. I don't want these pieces to get totally crumbled up. I want them yeah. to be, you know, chunky and have some bite to it. For sure. So this goes right in the center, just like that. And do you want to try the, just the tuna? Maybe it gives you... You have a fork I there? do. Oh, yes. <laughs> I will use a fork because we're not animals here, right? That's so good. It has flavor. It's that neither is so bland nor good. basic. I just want to eat this. Like, I could just. Careful put it now. On my cereal. Careful now. Oh, it's so good. And no, that's the it. The tuna, it's amazing. It's amazing. I always have it on hand. It's a wonderful ingredient. You can find it online if you're like, where do I buy that? Just look for it. Oh, Google it. So You'll good. find it somewhere. You'll find it somewhere. Chili crisp. Oh, wait, we got another recipe. Yes, okay. Yes. Now, super simple. Yeah. We're going to make an elegant and simple tuna tartine. Did you just give me the 30-second sign? <laughs> <laughs> just talk really quickly. It's All good. Right. It's, it's just a fancy <laughs> French way of saying open face sandwich. Yeah. So we got a nice piece of sourdough, and I've used the oil from the tuna can, just whisked with a little bit of crany mustard, and Thanks. it becomes... Really? But it's not fancy. It becomes the mayonnaise that you would use yes. to make a salad, but it's got more flavor. That's flavor town. Yes, I folded in the tuna, a little sun-dried tomato, red onion, and dill. That's it. And what did you put in on that beautiful, big, chunky bread? Sourdough, what is it? Sourdough. Sourdough. Mm. And this recipe, two for seven dollars, and this yeah. one, uh, four for twenty-five dollars. So it comes in at about six and a quarter per portion. So Thank we're not for breaking the bank. That. Yeah, it, it is about the budget. I got caught up in the sauce and the tuna. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you're going to get a good meal for not a lot of money. Thank you so much, Paul. Anytime. Find anytime. the recipes on our website, cityline.com.